While Ukraine's defiance that it will not be intimidated by Russian strikes on the country is at the top of the world's newspapers today. Diptyka Laurent is here to take us through it all. Dipti, uh, what do you have? Well, that's right. As you were saying, uh, that Ukraine is certainly dominating the papers today. Ukraine, uh, Russian missiles rained down on Ukraine yesterday, uh, even in the capital, Kyiv. Uh, and uh, for many, for much of the Western press, it really it's seen as retaliation for that attack on a Crimean bridge a few days ago. Now, uh, for Liberation, the French paper, the word terror really underpins its front page. Uh, and you see there it says a strategy of terror uh, condemning, I quote, yet a new low in Putin's bloody escalating war. And this victim on the front of Liberation is also on the front of some of the other pa papers that we will see. It's strikingly resemblant to a picture of a woman in a bandage that we saw uh, earlier in the war. So you really get a sense that this is sort of kind of months after that we're repeating uh, the same images again. Similar images uh, from Le Figaro, that's the French right-wing paper today. They evoke also uh, Vladimir Putin's retaliation. You see this, that word, sauvage, retaliation. Uh, the editors today say that Putin's continued escalation of the war in Ukraine is also po posing thorny questions now for his supporters who are caught in an impasse about what to do. What about the papers in Europe then, Dipti? What are they saying? Well, as we said, uh, uh, much of the sim much of the similar of similar images. Uh, you see this woman here uh, on the front page of El Mundo. She was the same woman on the front of Liberation, El Mundo, the Spanish paper. Uh, also going with that same sort of rhetoric, uh, the same language used by the French paper is vengeance. Uh, terror as well. Uh, this paper says Putin's vengeance. The Italian paper La Stampa says P Russia's fury. And this picture is quite striking. Uh, the, the aftermath of uh, one of uh, those attacks on uh, Ukrainian cities yesterday with that uh, dead body there you see in the foreground. So very uh, difficult images to see in the papers today, Erin. Difficult indeed. Dipti, you've also been looking at the Ukrainian and Russian press. What have you found from them? Well, not a lot of commentary from Commerçant today, but we thought it would be interesting to show nonetheless. This is uh, Commerçant, the Russian paper. It's sort of very factual, uh, sort of, but clearly the war in Ukraine is uh, at the top of its news today. The Kyiv Independent has a really interesting article about what's really behind this unusually uh, big missile attack on Ukraine. And it's very interesting because uh, the paper says that saying these strikes were just retaliation is a bit reductive. Uh, from a humanitarian point of view, it con constitutes crimes against humanity. But from a battle point of view, it was a total dud. Millions of uh, dollars spent to basically achieve nothing. So why was Vladimir Putin doing this, the paper asked. Well, uh, for this writer, at least, it was to appease the hardliners who are increasingly putting pressure on the Russian president to end this war or to win this war as quickly as possible, Aaron. Dipti, there's a lot of anger today as well as illustrated by, uh, or as, as well in the illustrated, illustrated press, excuse me. That's right. Uh, let's uh, show you this uh, uh, cartoon from Anne Telney's, uh, the cartoonist for the Washington Post. You really see uh, it, such a simple image, but it says so much about Russian uh, missiles targeting children's playgrounds. Uh, really, you know, uh, the uh, you, you have similar uh, imagery from uh, this. Uh, Let's see if we can bring it up. This one here, this is from a Dutch cartoonist. And you see again that image, that really condemning image of Vladimir Putin striking really the softest of soft targets, children. There's also uh, this one from a Ukrainian uh, uh, illustrator. His name is Andrei Petrenko, who really sees uh, Vladimir Putin as a what he calls a number one terrorist, in this case, literally spewing bombs. Moving on now, uh, Deepti, New Zealand's government is moving a step forward uh, to a world-first initiative, and that's taxing its farmers for their greenhouse gas output. It's a very, it's quite a controversial plan, actually, Erin, but it's very interesting if you look at the details. So Jacinda Ardern's government has un, uh, unveiled a plan yesterday, actually, that would tax farmers for the methane emissions by livestock. 
uh, and all of this by 2025. Basically, uh, cow burps and cow urine, urine are considered to be huge contributors uh, to greenhouse gases. The government wanted to get back on track to meet its methane reduction targets, and that's why it's introduced this plan uh, in which it would tax farmers uh, for uh, the greenhouse gas emissions of its cow of their cows, uh, and in in essence, uh, farmers would have to pay a levy to the government, and that levy would actually be reinvested into new technology research and incentive payments to farmers who do adopt climate friendly practices. A world first initiative. Uh, it would it would be when cabinet signs it uh, next year. Hard to see that going down uh, well, Dipti. I guess we'll have to wait and see. Finally, from you then, yet another cheating scandal has rocked the genteel world of Irish dancing and Fat Bear Week. That's right. The jig is up, you might say, Erin. Uh, after the infamous anal beads in chess, the world of Irish dancing was rocked by a scandal last week of cheating. Uh, the, apparently, according to the, independ the Irish Independent, it's the biggest scandal ever to hit the world of professional Irish dancing, uh, basically involving cheating among teachers and possible sexual quid pro quos. Uh, as a result, Riverdance, which was a big sponsor of these professional Irish dancing competitions, has pulled its support for the moment until that investigation concludes. However, uh, it seems like we're in the throes of a world of cheating or a cheating phenomenon, Aaron. After chess, Irish dancing, fishing and poker even the, the sweetest of all competitions, Fat Bear Week, was also rocked by a cheating scandal uh, this week uh, when Holly initially, who uh, announced as the winner of a semi-final match, was found to have had her ballot box artificially stuffed. Fat Bear Week organizers were forced to issue a mea culpa and announced the real winner as unnamed Bear 747. But alas... The damage was done. Even the most innocent of competitions is not immune from human-induced cheating, Aaron. Hard to imagine what people stand to gain from cheating and stuffing fake ballots at Fat Bear Week, but you never know. Deep Tika thank you very much.